Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told, I had a voice of radio, and we've looked at almost every card from Full Metal Wall. But we've not looked at every card from Full Metal War. We've looked through all the trainers. We've looked through almost all of the Pokemon. I mean, evolution ending lines, not some of the pre-evolutions. We don't need to look at all of those. But ladies and gentlemen, we've been ignoring Sandslash. First of all, I'm sorry. Second of all, let's get on it, shall we? Our translation here comes from the lovely Joe over at Cerebi.net. And starting off with the basics... I mean, 110 HP is it's low. I mean, Tapu Koko is a basic that's got 110 HP. We don't like 110 HP. The Retreat Cost of 1 is nice and low. You can use a Skateboard. You've got a single energy attack. So I can be on board with that. That's all right. Weakness to Grass is it's not bad, to be honest. Yeah, Down Mize will one-hit KO you. And Tapu Bulu will one-hit KO you. And Golisopod will one-hit KO you. But they're one-hit KOing you anyway. So who really cares? <laughs> the good news is you are a fighting Pokemon. That means you're hitting weakness against Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, which is going to be a monster. It's probably just going to get slotted in as the best deck in format. And Zoroark, who is the best Pokemon in the format. That's a good type to be. Plus, you have access to Brooklyn Hill to grab your basic. And you've got access to Diancy Prism Star to do a little bit of extra damage. And we're looking quite nice. But like I said in my Golem video, we do need to remember that Alolan Sandslash and Sandslash are not the same. So although we've actually got the really nice Alolan Sandslash with the ability that draws a card, you've got to play Alolan Sandshrew for that one and regular Sandshrew for this one. You can play both evolution lines, but you cannot mix and match. Although do remember you can always use Ditto Prism Star, which can evolve into any stage one. Yay! First attack is actually kind of nice if you're feeling a little bit lucky. One colorless energy, flip four coins. This attack does 30 damage for each head. And this is mostly quite nice. And you're hitting a whole bunch of really relevant numbers here. So one head, 30 damage. If you're lucky enough to see something like a Magikarp in the active, he gone. Or if you're against something like a Zorua that's weak, he gone. And that's about it. But then if you add a second head, now you're up to 60. And there's a whole bunch of other evolving Pokemon. Things like Volpix, for instance. Alolan Volpix. Or things like Routes. They're going. And of course, I've often told you about the difference between 120 and 130. Two heads plus weakness here. You will be hitting 120. But if you can hit up to three heads, that's when I start getting a little bit excited. Three heads, you're up to 90 damage. Now, there are some Pokemon, think things like Malamar and Makago, that you will just be hitting on your own merits just doing 90 damage. That's fine. That's adorable. But three heads, 90 damage. Add a choice band, 120. Oh, look. Pikachu and Zekrom's weak, and they've got 240. And then, obviously, you'll get Zoroark as well. And no, obviously, you don't need to have a choice band if you hit the four heads. But I think that three heads is realistic on a fairly regular basis. I think that four heads is a, yeah, I actually did it kind of thing. Not a reliable, I'm going to be able to do this on a regular basis kind of thing. So please do bear in mind that Choice Band is your friend here. And I love this. Stage 1, single prize Pokemon, single energy, getting a KO on a Tag Team GX. You cannot tell me that's not fun and exciting and lovely. Because it is fun, and it is exciting, and it is lovely. But we're going to have to talk about Victini here. I know we always talk about Victini when we talk about coin flips, but you know what? Here it is more relevant than... it is in most cards the thing is two heads as i've explained will get you some ko's but even with a choice ban that's no zoroark that's no pikachu and zekrom there's far too many that you're not ko'ing incidentally two heads with a choice ban will get a ko on a drampa if you can find anyone playing drampa or indeed a tauros if you can find anyone playing tauros not that many people are, unfortunately. We really need the third heads to make, well, hay here. I use that phrase quite a bit, but I'm cool with it. The thing is, Victini comes in nicely here. If you're flipping four coins, you should, on average, expect to flip two heads. 
So if you add in Victini, you're not going to hit free heads every turn. But with Victini, you should be able to hit free heads moderately often. And that's when you're really, really getting up to the numbers here. I like this very much indeed. If it wasn't a fighting type, I wouldn't be loving it. But it is a fighting type, so I am loving it. Incidentally, I said two heads isn't KOing Zoroark. If you've got Bianchi Prism Star, it actually will, because then you're hitting 60, Choice Band takes you to 90, Diancy Prism Star takes you to 110, and then Zoroark is going down because of weakness. You need to have the Diancy Prism Star, and you need to have the Choice Band there, which makes it a bit more awkward. And the other thing I really like about Alolan Sand Slash and this first attack, which is the best thing about the card, incidentally, the first attack is what we're really going for here, Colorless Energy. One single colorless energy. That's the hook of this card. You can take down a Pikachu and Zekrom. You can take down a Zoroark, and you only have to put one colorless energy onto the Pokemon. This is where you're really getting value out of this card. Because it doesn't have to go into a fighting deck. And incidentally, that's why I'm not too worried about the double heads KOing Zoroark, because you're probably only playing Diancie if it's a fighting deck. And I think one of the things I love about Sand Slash is that it doesn't have to go in a fighting deck. And yes, it's risky, ladies and gentlemen. It's exceedingly risky. But I'm kind of all right with that. Because it's for one energy on a single prize Pokemon. There's got to be some kind of downside here. But the fact of the matter is, any deck where you're just really struggling against Zoroark or really struggling against Pikachu and Zekrom, even if you don't get the KO here, it's a single prize Pokemon that's going to do a lot of damage. This seems like a really good tech in a whole bunch of decks. Second attack, one fighting, two colorless energy, 90 damage, the defending Pokemon cannot retreat during your opponent's next turn. Interestingly enough, I've done two new video analysis cards today. The other one we looked at earlier today was Tangrowth, which also had an attack which stopped your opponent retreating. But these are not the same attacks. With Tangrowth, I said, look, it's a single energy, so what you really want to do is try and get stuff like Decidueye and Shrine of Punishment, stick a Pokemon in the active that can't get out the active, and spread a whole bunch of damage around while you're getting ready for bigger attacks down the line. Sand Slash is just a flat two-hit KO. Now, the good news is, with a Choice Band, you will one-hit KO Pikarom, you will one-hit KO Zoroark, life is good. But if you're not hitting for weakness, you're looking at a two-hit KO. Because two hits with nothing else is 180. There's your Rayquaza. And there is your Blacephalon. And then similarly, if you do add the Choice Band on, then you're up to 240 in two hits. Which is nuts. There's be the odd thing like Metagross that you don't KO. But remember, Shrine of Punishment's still a thing. With Choice Band and Shrine of Punishment, you should be getting a two-hit KO on almost everything. And that's before we bring in Diancy Prism Star. Diancy Prism Star and a Choice Band here means you're actually doing 140 per attack, which doubles with 280, which means with Shrine of Punishment, you're even two-hit KOing Magikarp and Waylord. You are two-hit KOing everything. And I've said on a number of occasions, including a couple of videos recently, obviously one-hit KOing is preferable. But if you cannot one-hit KO, two-hit KO with disruption. And that is exactly what you're doing here. You're getting a two-hit KO. But in the meantime, you're stopping your opponent retreating. You're making sure that your opponent can't get out the active. And if we look at a couple of these Pokemon that we've mentioned in this video, Rayquaza... Well, Rayquaza has an attack for one grass, one lightning, one colorless energy. So if Rayquaza's got no energy attached and you hit it with Sand Slash, they are not being able to retreat. So maybe your opponent's got an Ace Roller, maybe your opponent's got a Guzma, and look, they are essentially the Achilles heels of decks like this. If your opponent is able to get out of the active with stuff like Ace Roller or Guzma, then that's annoying. But remember, any turn they're using an Ace Roller or a Guzma, they're not using something like a Cynthia to gain a card advantage, and they're not doing what they want to do. They are having to play their supporter for the turn to react to what you're doing, rather than doing what they'd rather do, so it's still not that bad if they do. But they're just not getting an attack off here. Similarly, Blacephalon. Blacephalon needs two fire energy attached to it, 
to really be able to do the good attack. Now it does have Bursting Burn, which does Burn and Confusion for one energy, but that is essentially what they're left to do here. That's pretty much their only option. So that's quite nice. I think that having to add the double colorless energy on top of the regular energy on 110 HP Pokemon might be a bit too much. I think this second attack here is one which is fine. But I don't think it's the reason you play. The first attack here is the reason to play this. And yes, it's incredibly flippy. But it's a single colorless energy on a single prize Pokemon. That alone makes it extremely interesting and very much worth taking a look at. So I am going to potentially generously be giving it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. I think this is going to end up being teched into some decks and seeing a bit of success. I've been wrong before. I've been right before. I guess, like always, we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I am very interested to know what you think about this card. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the most important thing as always. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk other games but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio